You are amazing. Thank you. Like, let's go back, you know. How did you get all this inspiration to start something like this? I mean, how old were you when you decided to enter into entrepreneurship? How old were you? Um, I was really young. I was, I, I think I was born with the entrepreneur mind. Hmm. <laughs> Ever since I was little, I, you know, I, I do this and that. Okay. Little stuff. So, mm. what did you start with? Your first entrepreneurship um, business? Poultry. I started with little birds. That time I was around 10, 12. Yeah. And then... You started poultry? Yeah, I started with... How many with, birds did you have that time? Um, I started with around 100. Yeah, 100 birds. Is it, was it profitable? Chicken. It was. It was really profitable. I think that's where I got the the whole, you know, motivation, the push when you do something and you gain out of it. So it was it was awesome that time and I was young so I was just looking forward to the future. After high school you decided to go and study a Greek yeah. in the university? Yeah, I've always loved farming. I've always, you know, loved agriculture. I was always a fan of nature and you know, it's actually very fulfilling seeing just like this uh, vegetable, seeing them grow out, oh. just like your babies. <laughs> yeah. Halima, oh my goodness. You know what? Let me know, like you're a poultry farmer. Mm -hmm. You switch from being a poultry farmer and then now you grow crops. crops. Yes. I'm not into livestock anymore, maybe in the future. Yeah, but. What, what made you start this one? Um, I think i i love the fact the green you know i love the fact that you you get to see a beautiful environment mm. you you grow something out of nothing <laughs> so yeah and i i like this is where my mind is at the moment mm. yeah how long have you been doing this um i started in in my fourth year at the university I was doing my practical year, and then I started my own personal farm as well. Halima, here in Africa, they always tell us to go to school, <laughs> become a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. Yeah, you know, when I started, everybody would be like, why would you go all the way to school and study agric? And I knew what I was doing, so I, sometimes I don't even give answers to that. Did they ever tell you that you're getting crazy for being a farmer? Not, not directly, but that's what people actually see, you know. They think you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see yourself as a crazy person? I don't. That's why it doesn't bother me. I, I know that agriculture is the future, especially in Nigeria. We have amazing land, you know. We have everything, so it's it's the future, literally. <sighs> I mean, like no, I don't even want to leave. I just wish I can also buy. And land in here. And yeah, you can, you can, yeah. you can just, um, you know, relocate and relocate, stay. Yeah, yeah I, I have to relocate. When I go here, I'm seeing people working on the farm. I'm yeah. actually not seeing you doing the farming <laughs> today, but I see people doing the farming. How many people work for you now? Well, we have full-time workers, mm. which are about maybe eight, ten. Okay. And then we have the, you know, when we have some activities like weeding, transplanting. We get a lot of people to do that because you know it takes it needs detail and it's human labor mm. so sometimes you can see up to 100 150 people in the farm working it's it's not small so yeah so it takes a lot of people mm, but since you, it, mm -hmm. we don't live here we have to travel all the way from yeah. Kano, like 45 minutes drive yeah 45 minutes one hour mm -hmm. so who which people protect this farm for you the the farm the villagers they, yeah they, they protect the farm for you they protect the farm we have um for example right now mm. since it's it's crops it's we have the vegetables they're always growing we have people that stays there that lives with their family just close by so they're the one protecting the the place seven hectares how, how, how many land are you cultivating right now out of the seven hectares Sorry? Like you have seven hectares of land. Mm -hmm. How many land are you using I right now? I do for the rice. I do the whole farm, but for the vegetables, this is about one one hectare. Wow. Yeah, for the we have peppers, we have onions, tomatoes, a little bit of eggplant, and um, and a little bit of beans. But the beans are, is actually for the you know fencing so. for the sides. Yeah, we have the 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 bigger bean.
Mm. But uh, how do you do the irrigation in here? You know, we have machines. It's, it's since it's not the raining seasons, we have we have machines, and um, it's you know the vegetables don't really need a lot of water, so we mm. do like once a week, sometimes twice. Okay. Yeah. Alima, there's so many questions that I know so many people are asking like, hey Maya, you're not asking her how she started, you're not asking her the capital that she invested in this farm. I mean, did you start with a huge capital from the beginning or you started from, from the from the from the very beginning, beginning? I started with small capital actually. Yeah, but you know farming doesn't need a lot of capital okay. you can just get in since we have rainfall it's nature okay. we have the rainfall we have the um the weather we have the soil and most of our soil in nigeria is very fertile it's very good so you can just go in with with little capital it's it's basically just like free with a little token oh, okay <laughs> so yeah, yeah in terms of acquiring the land acquiring the land is a bit tough but um, the whole process is, is not it's not really hard. What has been the major challenge that you face when you started this farming? Uh, okay, um, you know, just like every business, you know, failure is just a part of life. I feel like you have to fail before you, you get to, you know, you have to fail to know your mistakes. Exactly. When I started, the first time I failed, I failed and I lost a lot of money because I spent a lot. It was irrigation. It wasn't rainfall. So it was irrigation and I got really bad seeds. Mm. And that took me like twice the time of cultivating, which is twice the expenses, twice the labor. And then at the end, we got very little um, produce. So I failed the first time. And then tried uh, I tried again last and I got flood. It was really good, and then the we had rain, flood. It had more rainfall. Yeah, yeah, and it washed away everything. So we literally didn't turn up with anything. How did you feel that time? Well, I told you, I, I, I started business at an early stage, so I kind of wasn't really stressed out because I, I knew that there's something, you know. Like ups and downs. Yeah, and, and I knew that there was something waiting for me. Yeah. So and from that mistakes, from that failure, I, I, I learned a lot of things, you know, when you do, when you fail in something, you can't, you can't go back to that again. You can't really do that mistake again. Okay. Yeah. I really love your mindset. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely love your mindset. I just want us to uh, move around the farm a little bit okay. and I'll ask you my next question. Okay. So Maya, this is the carriage, a local oh, carriage we okay. use in, the farmers use in transporting the goods, you know, the produce, the machineries, the pumping machines and stuff, everything needed in the farm. So that's what they use in transporting it. Th this is purely local. Yeah, just yes. like the pickup truck. Exactly. So this is what they, 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 they do. And these cows are really huge, man. Yeah, they are. And they're organic. So this is like an exercise for them. So it keeps <laughs> them growing the muscles, the, oh. the meat. <laughs> Yeah. I really like how the vegetables are fresh and healthy. Yeah. You know how I feel right now because these things are so expensive in the market <laughs> and I'm seeing it all over. Like I feel like cooking right now. Yeah, it's, ah, it's yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I love pepper, you know, so I would love to cook right now. Alima, where do you sell this? Here in Nigeria or you export them? Yeah, no, no. I sell it here in Nigeria. But hopefully, maybe in the future, I'll be exporting it to other countries, you know. Yeah, yeah, start from other African countries. Yeah, yeah hopefully. So I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I get to you a uh, buyer in Ghana. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You know, we actually dry them up. You dry the yeah. pepper up? Yeah, the peppers. We dry them and then we you can store it or sell them dried. Oh, okay. So you don't, yeah. you don't sell it like fresh? In the beginning, maybe around this time, you can sell it fresh. And then when it starts getting very low in the market, mm you dry them like when it has starts getting abundant hmm. then you dry them up halima where mm -hmm. do you see yourself in the next 10 years <laughs> i don't want to say it <laughs> you know what I, I, i'm so proud of you <laughs> and i'm gonna save your contacts that in the next 10 years i have to call halima and ask you for one million dollars <laughs> you know so i need to know where, where do you want to see yourself in the next 10 years i just know that it's 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 going to be a success, inshallah. So. <laughs> inshallah.
Aliwa, we have so many young Africans watching us right now mm -hmm. who always think that it's not possible in Africa. Mm -hmm. They have to, I mean, travel abroad before they make it. Some of them even go the back way, I mean, go through the Mediterranean Sea before they go to Europe and all that, just for greener pastures. You have made it in here. I'm not saying you've made it, but you've done it. You've made it possible. 24 years old. If you have a message to young Africans watching us right now, what would that message be? Speak from the heart. <laughs> okay. I, I, I know that it's, it's, it's never too early, it's nev you're never too young, you know, if you see something, you just, just bring it out, just do it, don't be afraid of failure, I mean, failure is it's actually a good thing because that's what keeps you moving, when you fail, you just want to beat that, you know, and, and make it. So I, what, whenever you see something and you just bring it out, make sure we all have something in us. We can't just take it to the grave. We have to do something to see what we're good in. So just, just do what, 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 what you have. <laughs> just bring it out. Did, did anybody in Africa ever mm -hmm. told you that you're too young to do what you're doing? Yeah, at some point I don't even like to say my age. I feel kind of maybe embarrassed at some point to say my age because a lot of people will be like, oh my god, you're too young for this, you know? So... Too young for this? <laughs> yeah. Too young to be a farmer? <laughs> for so many things, so... Then which means if I give you the opportunity or the chance to change one thing in Africa, Halima... In Africa? What, yeah, or in Nigeria, mm -hmm. what would that thing be? What will you change? I think our mindset, you know? we are all our minds are all corrupt so we i what i one thing i want to i just want to do in a blink of an eye is to just change nigeria and make it a better place you know change the economy change the mindsets clean our minds <laughs> we all have the same thinking in nigeria we all have the same mindset we are so corrupt so i think that's that's what every true Nigerian really wants a great Nigeria, a, a, a green Nigeria. Do, do you know how to sing the Nigerian National Anthem? Of course I do. Can we sing it and end the video? <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, come by choice, Nigerians call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. <laughs> so it's time for each and every Nigerian out there to, to serve, serve the yeah. fatherland. I mean, some of you sing the national anthem without even understanding. Yeah. You're serving your fatherland in this way. And I will tell you that a lot of Nigerians out there are proud of you. Thank you. Africa is proud of you. Never stop what you're doing. I'm going to come shall. back again because of you. I'm coming back to Kano again. Yeah, come back to relocate. Just relocate. Uh, we, we're I'll, going to I'll, get you a place to stay. Please, buy me a land. I also <laughs> want to be a farmer. Okay. Yeah, like, people really make that much amount of money. A lot of people, yes. The richest black man is from Kano, so... Oh! Yeah, and... You mean Dangote is from Kano? Yes, he's from Nigeria. He's from Kano. I didn't know that. Yeah, he is. H so how we, many rich people have ever come out of the city? A lot of people. So Kano is just a great place. <laughs> Uh -huh. I know it's great. Everybody, a lot of people oh. have made it. A lot of people are making it. Ooh. I can take you to a friend of mine, oh, really? um, Farida. She's a woman, and she made it in the in the textile. She's into the textile business, and she she actually started from grass to grace. Grass to grace. Yes, and she's doing so good in the business. She owns her own textile company or something. Yes. Yes, she doesn't. She doesn't like um, produce. She doesn't have a factory, but she makes her own. She designs it. She brings it. She distributes it all over the market. Whoa! All over this market. Hey, is it possible for you to take me? Of to course, you can see her. She's one of the people that she truly inspires me. She inspires you. Yes. But your life inspires me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet your inspiration. Will you okay. take me yes, there? we can. Amazing. We can go there, right there. You know what? So, Inshallah. this is Kanu. I'm so glad that I came in here. They said this place is called the center of commerce. This is where people actually make more money. And here, I should make money too. And my friend, Halima. No, you know what? You need to get a YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, I have the channel, but I'm not really... Um, I'm not really um, serious about it. You know what? But hopefully... Mm -hmm. Let's do this. I'm going to do this for you. Okay. I'm going to do this for you. 
You know, since I came to Kanu, I'm not seeing any YouTuber from Kanu. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is to create a YouTube channel for you. Okay. So that we help you tell our stories from Kanu. Is that All right. Okay? Hopefully, but it's going to be mostly food vlogs and stuff. Food vlogs. Yeah. No, show us food vlogs and show us a little bit of Kanu. All right then. You know, you can do this. Help me. 10,000 subscribers by the end of this month for this beautiful lady beside me. I mean, she has been of a great help taking me everywhere I want to go to. So if you love your favorite boy, please do me a favor. Go to our YouTube channel. The link will be in the description box. Make sure you go yes, like, you know and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, and I promise I'm going to be very much active. <laughs> you promise? Yeah. All right, let's go meet your friend. All right. Fantastic. Mommy, my name is Wadamaya from Ghana and my beautiful friend Halima told me that you are one of the people in Kano who really represent from grass to grace. Can you please tell me your name and who you are? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. My name is Farida Musa Kalla. Mm. And um, you are born and raised in Kano? Yes, I'm born and raised in Kano State uh, at Gomaja. She told me something that I never believed. She told me that you're one of the people that took the risk in trying to buy a car, but you first to buy the car and then use the money to do business. But I, I, she normally lies a lot, so. Totally <laughs> <No>. <laughs> totally My sure. friend is telling you the truth. Really? Yeah. <laughs> can, can you tell us how everything started? Oh, um, I at first I started business with just few wrappers and ten pieces, like for. 15,000 or 20,000, that is, let's see, my pocket money. But uh, I was given 600,000 from my mom to buy a car. Naira? Yeah, Naira in Naira, to buy a car. That's the last 10 years. I didn't buy the car. I, my husband encouraged me not to buy that car at then because he cannot handle two cars for maintenance at once. It, I, That's the year 2010. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, at the year 2010, you're already married. Yes, I'm married. Okay. I was married at the age of 18 years. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and why was your mother giving you money to buy a car? Okay, then I was going to university, okay. uh, BUK at Kano State. Hmm. I was going by taxi. Then she gave me that car. Mm, I was pregnant, my first pregnancy because of the struggles so she gave me that money at least to reduce oh, the, okay. yeah so the money was just to make your life comfortable yeah exactly and you didn't make your life comfortable <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> tell me what you did with the money okay my husband was a business person okay. he gave me he encouraged me not to buy that car because he cannot handle the maintenance of two cars at once that is what i was telling you mm. then he encouraged me, maybe you can, with that money keeping them, you can start the business of that 10 wrappers that you are buying. You can start with, let's say, 1,000 of pieces of it. I will encourage you how to be successful. I was so scared because I don't want to, I don't want to, let's say, the money, that money, I was saying it as my life. <laughs> <laughs> because I never, I, I never have that money before. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're keeping that money. Yes, I'm keeping it without the car. Maybe let's say I gave him maybe one year or two year to settle after marriage. Mm -hmm. From then I will buy the car. Okay. Yes. <laughs> then he encouraged me. Maybe you can start the business with one thousand instead of you buying ten pieces of wrappers buy 1000 of it i will encourage you how to be successful hmm. yes um, i was so scared we bought that wrappers from india i imported it by cargo then he encouraged me to start the business with maybe yes you won't give out credits don't give out credits that's my first word to you wow. then uh, if that wrapper in the market, we're selling it at uh, 5,000, then you put little profits of okay. it uh, uh, from 
the profit you are expecting give out to wholesalers the wholesalers try to see let's say minimum of 10 pieces is the wholesale price mm -hmm. we're selling it at four thousand five thousand then you put only the profit of uh, 700 naira that it that is uh, sell it at uh, four thousand naira mm. then the quantity should be 10 pieces minimum and it should be cash you see your wholesalers will come to you and buy it at cash because the price is lesser they will gain they will sell it also and gain another profit from it so in no time in just one week i can see i sold out that 1000 pieces and my profits was intact in cash <laughs> i was so surprised then he encouraged me i should keep on doing it if there is anything he will keep me in the right path because he he's a business person as I told how, you. How much did you make in your first um, in your first business? In my first like business? From the 600? Yes, I can see 400. In no time, I was recording 1 million naira. Out of the 600? <laughs> Out of the 600. So, were you happy that you Yes, I was car? so happy. I was so happy. I hope you didn't stop school. No, the money. no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so um, you, how long have you been doing this business from 2010 to? Yes, till now. You see, now I, I'm at my shop here. Oh, before you didn't have a shop? Uh, yes, I, it's in my house, in my parlor. My, I used to, my sitting room, I used to put the wrappers and selling it at home, but advertising from Facebook. There is no even Instagram then. Yes, Whoa. only Facebook and WhatsApp. So you, you, you were advertising on Facebook and yes, WhatsApp? Yes, yes. You didn't have a shop? I didn't have a shop. Now you have a shop? Yes, I How have many shops, shops you have? three shops. <laughs> you have three shops? Yes, three shops. Did you buy a new car? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of cars now. <laughs> yeah. You, you built your own house? Yes. Is I, it a mansion or a house? A, a mansion, <laughs> not a house. <laughs> 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 oh my God. You know, we have so many young Africans watching us right now, especially young women. Yeah. We have a message to tell she them. She said what something will be. about the first year. First year? Yes, in first year, I recorded around from 600,000. I was recording like 10 million naira for the first year of my business. No, I, 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 you <laughs> The first year of your business? Yes, the first out of the, year. Out of the 600? Yes, yes, out of the 600, I was recording 10 million. And that was cash, I'm telling you. There is no credit in that business. <laughs> Whoa. So this is what you've been doing? Yes, so, so now. yes. Yes, this is what I have been doing. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Are you planning to establish your own factory here in Kanu? Yes, inshallah. That's my plan. But even if it is a small factory, I want to start with it. What, what has been the major challenge doing this business in here? The major challenge doing business here? Yeah. Maybe I can see the government is not ready for help. Most you can see like now transfer of dollar is something else. And yes, uh, you cannot um, buy goods abroad. The process of sending money is becoming so hectic. Most especially during this corona period. Wow. And it's affecting the business. Exactly. Yeah, but I know you have a lot of experience, so you definitely come yes, out of Yes, yes, exactly. How many people are working for you now? Uh, 22. 22. Like 22, 22 yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, there's something that I really don't understand, yeah? You made all this thing possible here in Nigeria. Yes. Did you live in the UK? No. Did you live in the US? No, I Did never you live been. In Canada? No, I never been there. But I can see I was in China last year because of the business. Okay. Well, maybe um, I used to go to Dubai since before, but it's because of the business I have been traveling out. And there's so many young Nigerians out there who are saying that it's not possible in Nigeria. No, it's possible. <laughs> it's in possible. Kano. All this, <laughs> I have done it here in Kano, Nigeria. <laughs> you did everything here? Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so if you have a message for young Nigerians who are looking for where to go out there, or those of them who are out there, if you're telling them to come back or don't go, what would that message be? Everything is possible in my country. They can do, 
they can do whatever they want and they will be successful inshallah there is no rush in the in life that is what i can see everything if it's if it's time for you to do it you will do it like me now you can see i told you i'm having a lot of cars that time when i when i was given money for the car it's not yet time for me to do it <laughs> it's not yet time for you to have it. Yes. <laughs> now, I think even if you are going to wash, you have to drive. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody want to buy anything from you or if somebody want to get to know who you are, where do we find you? FMK Clothing Nigeria Limited at Instagram. Okay, and yes. Facebook? Uh, Facebook, FMK Collectibles. Uh, before she didn't have Instagram, now she's giving us Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <handle. laughs> I just want to say, yeah, from the Instagram, there's yeah. the contact and everything. Yes, everything, everything is there. So if you are in Nigeria, wherever you are in Nigeria, definitely you have to contact her. We have a lot of customers at Ghana. We used really? to send, yes. Oh, so it's like, I, I forgot to ask you, so do you sell only to Nigerians? No, or? not Nigerian. We used to send to Ghana. Our I'll, rappers I'll, I'll all round. I'll be your supplying guy. <laughs> <laughs> I also need to make 10 million now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>